Most Americans today were introduced to the Medical Army Surgical Hospital by the popular television show, MASH. But General Thomas Whalen Jr. lived it. I was transferred to the 8063rd MASH Mobile Army Surgical Hospital. Although he had been most instrumental in the founding and playing a leadership role in the formation of MASH units during the Korean War, he gave all the credits uh, to others and none to himself. The Army knew Whalen's contributions. Post-war, he was called to duty at Walter Reed. I took care of some fairly important people. Uh, among them were uh, General Douglas MacArthur, he also operated on former President Eisenhower before receiving new orders. So we went uh, then from Walter Reed, where I'd been assigned from 1959 to 1965. We went to Tripler in Honolulu from 1965 to 1969. Dr. Whalen came to Tripler in 65, the same time I did. He was chief of surgery there but he'd already had an international reputation. At Tripler, Peter Barsha, then the young intern, received some startling advice from the prominent general. Peter, you need to be a surgeon. Don't waste your life at OBGYN. It wasn't a knock against OBGYN. To Whalen, doctors who practiced anything but surgery were limiting themselves. He felt it should be a real calling. It should be about the love of people. Um, it should be about healing. It's the kind of thing he would tell young doctors like these training at UH today. General Whalen led surgery residencies at both Walter Reed and Tripler before becoming the medical school's chair of surgery. In the lecture hall, the general's face still looks on, and his words still echo. The privilege of being able to take care of other human beings as a physician is a very, very beautiful relationship. You have been given an amazing privilege to take care of people that you meet once and then you get to go to the operating room with them, right? So I think that privilege, again, is something you should never, ever violate. You should never, you should never underestimate the value of what you do and what you've been entrusted to do. The UH got a leader who made a lasting impact. You will notice that most of the surgeons who are in the community now that are doing surgery, they ultimately have lineage back to him. His legacy is still very real and apparent here, even to this day. In a profession where details mattered, he demanded precision. He was great with patients. He had a flypaper memory. It was really annoying, actually, because he remembered everything. So I remember one when I was an intern, I was putting in a central line on one of his patients. And uh, I stuck a needle in the guy's neck, and I thought I was in the right place. And as I withdrew the inner cannula, the blood just squirted out of the needle and hit the wall behind me. And Tom Whelan walks in the room, just he's seeing his patient. And he looks at me, and he looks at the blood on the wall, and he says something like, man, an adventure with a carotid artery, didn't you? He created this uh, educational environment that was both accepting, humorous, uh, fun to be with, and yet very serious. This is one of his classical one-liner remarks he would make that stays with you forever. And he said, you know, Peter, the gastrointestinal anastomosis is far more critical than the vascular anastomosis. And do you know why? And I said, no. And he says, because shit doesn't clot. And it's the white cells that kind of... Professor Mihai Yu was one of Hawaii's first female trauma surgeons. She admires Whalen's ability to deftly handle personnel squabbles. One day I got into trouble yet again because, you know, being a women's surgeon, the nurses didn't like me, and they thought I should be wearing nylons in the operating room. And, uh, of course, I don't like to wear nylons in the operating room. And so they reported me to poor Dr. Whalen, who had to sit me down. 
And he didn't know what to say because he never had a female resident that he would have to tell him to wear nylons. So he told me the story of Joe Namath, who I had no idea who this man was, and how he had to wear nylons. I found out later he was a football person. Um, but as you can see, I still don't wear nylons. Um, <laughs> On weekends, the general and his trainees bonded at Charles Judd's place on Windward, Oahu. Members of the faculty, students, residents would get together. We would uh, play volleyball. So those are very sweet memories that I wish we could repeat. It was just your quintessential educator slash uh, surgeon slash instructor, father figure, mentor, everything. In a way, he adopted me. I felt like a, like a son. He was closer to me than my own father. For the young doctors coming along, my biggest advice would be, please enjoy yourself. Uh, have fun in doing what you're doing. Because what you're doing, you're in such a serious sort of profession that it's really too serious to to stay that serious about it. You've got to have fun. You've got to sense, have a sense of humor in, in it because funny things happen in medicine too, even with tragic situations. He certainly wasn't too serious at residency completion celebrations that all ended the same way with a performance by Waylon Judd and Associate Chair Judson McNamara. He would grab the microphone and he would just break out into McNamara's band. Oh, my name is McNamara, I'm the leader of the band. And he'd march around acting like a crazy man, going from table to table, stomping around singing McNamara's band. And he did that every year at the ceremony. They would, three of them, stand up and march around the, the hall and talk about uh, McNamara's band, and um, that was one of the highlights of graduation that I remember. Go like this. I don't know if he had a baton with him or something, but he would do this kind of thing, walking around like he was the the band leader. You realize what a fun um, profession this is, and what a fun calling it is. Because you always get mad at the billing and the collections and malpractice and all this, but it's still the greatest job in the world. And he, and he made you realize that. It just gives you this rush unlike any other. Maybe being a rock star would be better, but I don't think so. It's like a painting or a symphony you just finished, and it's a really beautiful work of art. Now, if the shit leaks, it's not a beautiful work of art. It's a disaster and you have complications, but yeah, it's a great job. Shouldn't call it a job. It's a great calling. I'm really proud uh, of his students. I think he wanted to see it grow with, with a, in all its diversity. And I think from what I've seen, uh, it, it looks that way. And I, I think he'd be very proud. They say old generals never die. And as far as Dr. Whalen is concerned, he doesn't fade into the sunset because he's still here with me. If you look around at the providers in surgery who trained under him, it is absolutely true that they are some of the most compassionate, humane surgeons I think you'll find anywhere. So I'd like to thank him for leaving that legacy to the people of Hawaii. Grateful is an understatement. I'm grateful that he taught me, and I was exposed to his very uh, sense of personal character and surgical competence and medical discipline. I feel like I have lived a dream. I hitched my wagon to a star. We're all very lucky and blessed to have found Tom Whalen.